So last week we talked all about online tools that we can use, things like Bible Hub and Bible Gateway and Blue Letter Bible, Uversion, and our fun little trick with Google Search. This week we're going to talk about more tools, but not necessarily online tools. So they're resources that you can access whether you have an online or not. What I'm talking about is cross-references, concordances, footnotes, and commentaries. So we're going to do this kind of in two parts. One where we're going to talk about what they are and what the differences are and how you would use them. Then in the second part, I'm going to flip things around and let you see my screen and we'll go on a little adventure <laughs> with the cross-references, footnotes, commentaries, and concordances. Okay. First, we're going to talk about cross-references and concordances. And then we'll talk about footnotes and commentaries. And there's a reason that I'm putting them together the way that I am. Cross-references and concordances point back to Scripture. There is a famous quote by Martin Luther that says, Scripture is its own best interpreter. And so cross-references and concordances are a really good example of how that happens. So cross-references are markers or notes they're placed within the text or within the scripture. And so a lot of times what you'll see is a letter of the alphabet in parentheses. And so usually that points you down to another place. Cross references help to give you a better sense of the scripture or the passage that you're reading. That little marker will send you to other places in scripture where that word or idea or theme show up. So that if you can look in those other places where the related content appears and you start to read those and you kind of pull the thoughts together, you start to get a bigger sense for what the scripture is saying. And there are also different kinds of cross-references. There are those that um, refer to similar words or phrases. There are cross-references that point you back to similar themes. And then there are cross-references where one passage quotes another passage. Then we have concordances. And concordances are an alphabetical listing of words that appear in the Bible and provide citations and passages for the main references where those words appear. So... <laughs> An easier way to look at it might be like a topical index. So have you ever noticed um, in the back of your Bible, there's a concordance where there will be a word, um, let's just say resurrection. And underneath the word resurrection, sort of a heading, then there will be all these verses listed out where you can find the word resurrection within the scripture. That's a concordance. Most Bibles have at least a minimal concordance at the back depending on whether um, it's intended to be a study Bible or not, it may have a pretty extensive concordance at the back. But most, except for some gift Bibles, will have some kind of concordance at the back. Another thing to note is that concordances are translation specific. So for example, if you were to look at an NIV concordance and look up the word resurrection, well, it's going to show you every time that the word resurrection shows up in the NIV Bible, but it won't show you in other translations because sometimes they use a different word. And just like cross references, there are different types of concordances. We have the topical index that's often found at the back of Bibles. We have an exhaustive concordance, which includes every word within the Bible. So if you're looking at uh, a concordance for the NIV Bible, then every single word that shows up within the Bible, the A's, the V's, the thans, um, every word will show up in the concordance. So next we're going to talk about footnotes and commentaries. And you remember when we were talking about cross-references and concordances that they always will point you back to scripture. But footnotes and commentaries are a little different in that they actually will point you to a man's interpretation. 
And as you can imagine, um, there are some people that think you absolutely should not read footnotes or commentaries because you should only ever read scripture itself. I'm not here to say <laughs> what you should or shouldn't do. I'm here to explain what they are. And so just as a reference, consider Acts 8, 30 and 31. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. Footnotes and commentaries are a man's effort to help explain scripture to you. So let's talk a little bit about footnotes. Footnotes are, they're like an extra list of information that's found at the bottom of the pages. And so you've probably seen that especially in a study Bible where you'll see the scripture on half of the page and then like the lower third, there's a line and then a bunch of footnotes. Those footnotes can be several things. They can be reference information, explanations of the text. They can also include comments about the text. Things like some translations say, or some manuscripts say, or the Dead Sea Scrolls say, or they might give you cultural context. Commentaries are a written explanation of a passage or a verse, and they're usually written by scholars, people who know way more about scripture than I do. And their goal is to help explain some things. They may be offering cultural and geographical context. Maybe they're explaining some differences in the language. They may also refer you to related archaeological studies or give historical details just to help you more fully understand the scripture that you're reading. And just like cross-references and concordances, there are different kinds of commentaries. So one of those is exegetical or critical, technical, but it's very, very detailed and explains all the details of the scripture. So the first kind is exegetical. It's more of a technical or critical type of commentary. It's a very detailed commentary where they explain every little piece within the scripture. Another kind of commentary is an expository. It's less detailed and technical and actually gives more of the background and meaning in life application. And the third kind is a devotional commentary. And in those, there's less focus on the scriptural details and more on the spiritual meaning and the life application of the scriptures. So now that we've talked about them, let's go back online and take a look on screen at what that looks like. So the first time that God took me on this crazy rabbit hole scavenger hunt kind of journey with scripture through the cross references and footnotes, this is where it started. I was reading Revelation 320 and I'm going to look at it here in the Passion Translation because of the footnotes. So if you look at Revelation 320, it says this, Behold, I'm standing at the door knocking. If your heart is open to hear my voice and you open the door within, I will come into you and feast with you and you will feast with me. Now, I've heard that verse lots and lots of times. Probably you have too. But for whatever reason, I just happened to notice the footnotes with this one. And it sent me on this amazing journey into scripture where I really started to fall in love with understanding the culture during the time that this was written. Because when you understand the culture, it really starts to change your understanding of what we're reading. So in this example, we're actually looking at footnotes. And we have one here, and we have one here, and they're actually down below for us. So we're going to take a look at the first one. Revelation 3.20, the Aramaic can be translated, I have been standing at the door knocking. Jesus knocking on the door points us to the process of an ancient Jewish wedding invitation. In the days of Jesus, a bridegroom and his father would come to the door of the bride-to-be, carrying the betrothal cup of wine and the bride price. Standing outside, they would knock. If she fully opened the door, she was saying, yes, I will be your bride. Jesus and his father in the same way are knocking on the doors of our hearts, inviting us to be the bride of Christ. 
Now, in the past, when I've read that verse, I knew that it wasn't Jesus standing and knocking on an actual door. I knew he was knocking on my heart. But for some reason, reading this footnote really started to sink in. And understanding the culture of ancient Jewish weddings really changes the way that I have looked at all of Scripture. And so that's actually the journey that I went on for several months of just reading everything that I could to understand more about ancient Jewish wedding customs. And so we're not really going to go into that, but I really just want you to see how using the cross references and the concordances and the footnotes and the commentaries, how using those to really grab hold of scripture can actually help you fall in love with scripture. And so let's take a look at this second footnote. It says that Revelation 3.20 is likely taken from Song 5, 1 and 2, where the king knocks on the door of the heart of the Shulamite, longing to come in and feast with her. And they've actually given us this reference that we can jump over. This is our cross reference where we can actually go and take a look. Now they're giving us a snippet here, but if we click on the verse up here, we can actually go see it. And so you can see here and you can continue to read. And actually, as you go on reading that, there are more footnotes and cross references for you to check out. And so you can see that as you start to chase down those cross references and footnotes, it can actually take you down a rabbit hole, but it's the best kind of rabbit hole. What better way to get lost in time than to get lost in scripture? Now we're going to jump over to Blue Letter Bible and take a look at the same verse, but with a different purpose. So here we have the verse and we're actually in the New Living Translation. And again, if you want to change the translation you're in, you can do that here. But we're just going to stay here in the New Living Translation just so we can take a look at some of the other tools or resources available to us. And so here we have the cross references and um, in the Blue Letter Bible we don't even actually have to click on it because this right here, now if you click on it it's just going to scroll down, but this takes you to Song 5-2 and this one will take you down to here. Okay, so here are the cross references and you can jump down here and start reading the cross references and then actually as you click on them and go study their tools, you can go further and further and you can keep going until you finally find whatever it is that sort of satisfies what you're looking for. We've already talked about the footnotes and now we've talked about the cross references and we won't really go into a concordance because the concordance is really just choosing the topic and then going and finding all the references that go to it. But we are going to take a look at the commentaries. And so you can see for Revelation 3.20, there are tons and tons of commentaries. And if you remember, I told you one that I tend to go to quite a bit is Matthew Henry. And so let's just jump over there and take a quick look. So we have here where he's doing the whole chapter. Remember I told you that sometimes commentaries will be broken down by verse and other commentaries will actually go over a whole chapter. So here Matthew Henry's doing the whole chapter of Revelation 3. But if you want to skip down and look at where he talks about verse 20 and you can see here this is where he's talking verse 2. Here he's talking about verse 3, here he's talking about verse 4, so we're going to scroll way down here. Here we've got 12 and 13. Okay, now you can see in this section, it's Revelation 3, 14 through 22. And we're going to come on down here and keep looking. So there's verse 15, verse 17. 18, 19, and 20. So this is what Matthew Henry says. Here is added great and gracious encouragement to the sinful people to take the admonition and advice well that Christ had given them. Verses 19 and 20, he tells them. And so you can see, you can just keep reading. And then here where he's actually talking about verse 20. If they would comply with his admonitions, he was ready to make them good to their souls. Behold, I stand and knock at the door. Here observe, Christ is graciously pleased by his word and spirit. And so all of this is talking about verse 320. 
Um, you can actually read all of the chapter that you're looking into. You can scroll down and find where they're talking about the particular verse. One of the things about Matthew Henry is that it's one of the older commentaries. And so in his, he uses, um, sometimes the language is a little academic or, um, it's just a little bit different language and so it can take a little bit of getting used to but if you find that you have a hard time reading one commentary then you just go back and check out another one because truly you just have so many choices and so I would just hop around um, Spurgeon is always a really great one but there are tons and tons of um, options here Tozer is uh, a favorite and these would be an audio but you have lots of choices. So if you try Chuck Smith's commentaries and you just have a hard time understanding him, then maybe you go try another one until you find somebody that kind of speaks your language or speaks in a way that you understand. Um, truthfully, I tend to look at several, but it just depends on what I'm trying to research or understand as to how far I dig. But honestly, you can try Truly get lost in the scripture and it's actually one of my favorite things to do um, I, I have found myself several times wishing in the morning as I drive to work that I didn't have to go to work only because I would rather be digging in the scriptures so and I tell you that not to brag but because it is possible once you understand how to dig in so that's cross references and concordances and footnotes and commentaries and remember that cross references and concordances will always point you back to related scripture while footnotes and commentaries are going to point you to a man's interpretation of the scripture both are really helpful and valuable in helping you to understand the scripture I've also created a resource for you to go along with today's video and you can find the link for that down in the description under the video and as always, make sure that you click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And if you want to connect with us in any of the other socials, those links will be down below too. So we'll see you in the next video where we talk about using devotionals and Bible studies to actually dig even deeper.